What's going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode of the Create You Experience. And you might be wondering why in the world am I at Target? Well today we're joined by Brooklyn Hillenbrand, a good friend of mine, but also an influencer and very successful at what she does with bodybuilding and competing and a whole bunch of other things that you have no clue about until today. Now as you know, the Create You Experience is all about bringing an experience to you and that's why we're at Target first and then we jump into the podcast and bring strategies and structures so that you can bring your vision to life or even help people around you. So. Brooklyn, come join me. This is Brooklyn. Hi. Say hello. She is, has an incredible story, and it really starts with soccer, and that was her life, and that's what she really was involved with for so many years. Played overseas, played in college. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna run into Target, grab a soccer ball. She's gonna kick my ass a couple times. <laughs> try. With the, well, try, try, try. So without further ado, let's get started. Come on. When it comes to soccer balls. <laughs> When it comes what, to soccer balls. What do we grab? There's literally like 20, 25 okay, well, soccer balls. Yeah, so this, the, the, you look at the sizes. So size three, size four, size five is the highest one they So are we size three? Size three would be um, maybe like U4. That's the biggest that they have. That's, that's the biggest they have. We can make it work. Okay, grab it. Whichever one you want. Okay, so so we now know that you can definitely play. We, we I de hope. We definitely I've know that. In, I've been now, over two years. Now, before we get into the gym, I want to see if you can score on me. Okay. Okay? Let's do it. It's it's not going in. All Come right, on. you're see right. where you're at. Come on, girl. Have it in soccer. There you have it in soccer. It's hard to be a goalie. It's hard to be a goalie. Check out this quick little edit that we put together for her just to see some of her movements. And then we're gonna jump right into the podcast. Come join us. Let's ride. Problems on problems on problems on problems on problems are solved. But my run through the money, the pressure be calling. Left on my blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back. Tell me I'm garbage, I'm going through something. That's why I ain't calling. Phone in progression, it's all that I wanted. A phone in affection, I summon and dub it. Why you be all in my line about nothing? Why won't you go get you a dollar or something? Don't hang with a nigga who lying for nothing. I see that we different, you ride and I dub them. I don't do discussions on bragging about hundreds. Don't go to your places, I know that they sunken. Don't call me your brother, I barely can trust you. I talk to a shorty, she bagging the bugging. And I'ma need all of my dollars on corporate, so hand me the money, I divvy the pie. I'ma give all of my people a portion to build them a fortune on flipping the ride. I can't be mixy when iffy the vibe. And 40 on 50 is really the time. Why is you all on my phone like you want me? Like you wasn't pushing the kid to the side. I don't know if you bitches are thinking I'm blind. Cross on my crosses and dot on my eyes. Done with your efforts, I'm dealing with pressures. I know it's a lesson, that's worth it the wise. Dubbing the mixes I'm mixing, I know I've been missing. I needed some personal time. Fuck all the pictures, dimensions. I don't with your digits, I mean it, I'm staying inside. Cause bitch, bitch I got problems on problems on problems on problems on problems on problems. I saw but my run through the money. The Hey, my name is Brennan Myers, and welcome to the Create You Experience, where we ignite your breakthrough, create your experience, and bring your vision to life. Uh, I can't sit around and wait till it goes right, cause I've been hopping over obstacles my whole life. I got a vision and I know it's about to take flight, I'm dedicated to growth, I keep my mind right. I fell down, got up, I'm unbreakable. Anything in my way, I'ma break through Lights, camera, action, take two Can't worry about what they do You gotta create you Welcome back 
to another episode of the Create You Experience. Today we have someone extremely, extremely special. Thank you. I don't like to use the word special. I like to use the word unique. Okay. I like that. On the show. I'm, okay. I'm super excited for this. Uh, her name is Brooklyn Hillenbrand. Kind of like, kind of like, uh, like what? Raisin Brand? Ooh, yes. Yeah. That yeah. was juicy. Yeah. yeah. That was juicy. <laughs> Remember, we are unfiltered here and we go all the way. The purpose of this show is to create you, to bring your vision to life and really just take maybe Brooklyn to a place that she's never been or take your mind to a place that you've never been. And that's through getting uncomfortable. Love that. Love that. <laughs> I do. Let's go. That's through <laughs> going through past experiences, but also talking about strategies and structures for you to implement into your life or into your career so that you can take the next step in your life and, and the people around you can also experience that same transformation. So remember, you can get seven free products when you go into the description, whether it's on YouTube. Remember, we're on YouTube and all audio platforms, Spotify, wherever you are, iTunes. When you go into the description, you get seven free products for absolutely free when you review the podcast on iTunes. That's pretty cool, right? I think it's awesome. Yeah, that's not bad. Seven free products? Yeah. Seven? Just, yeah. yeah. I'm going to go review right now. So I get the seven <laughs> no, free no, products. No, no, don't leave. <laughs> but yeah, so thank you everyone for tuning in to this episode so let's just jump right into it. Brooklyn. Hi. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? Uh, I'm amazing. Your eyes are li literally like piercing my soul right now. Perfect. She's got these like Perfect. very beautiful mm -hmm. eyes and there's a lot that that's in those eyes. There's a lot of passion. There's a lot that a lot of people might not even know about, right? You're, you're with bodybuilding.com right now. Yes. You have, you're starting your own business. Yes, I am. soon. You have a lot of awesome things going for you, but it wasn't always like that. Nope. Not, my life has changed incredibly, even in the last year. In the last year, right? Yeah. And so if you're here on YouTube, obviously you can see this. If you're on audio, we're, gonna, we're looking at the screen right now. This is before. Mm -hmm. Me and so high school. she had three, she tore her knee three different times Yes. from playing soccer. So she's a, she's a soccer is like at the heart, at the center of, of Brooklyn. And when you look at these pictures, since you can't see, you know, it's, she's being carried by her teammates. There's one that she's literally in like after surgery in a big brace. And then there's also one where she actually does not look too happy. To be honest, you don't look too happy. Look at my finger. Yeah. Yeah. You look, you look kind of like, Oh, you have a broken finger too. That's great. How, how do you break a finger in soccer? I did. So <laughs> there's did. that. I broke everything. But here's the, here's the interesting part about Brooklyn. She had complete reconstructive surgery on that knee. Mm -hmm. And you played soccer for years and years, your whole life. Yes, whole life. And you were slapped in the face out of nowhere. You were punched in the gut and you dropped like that. And you kept on getting back up. You kept on getting back up. But then the third one was the charm, right? And it actually says this here on the screen. It says... <laughs> Third time's a charm, hopefully. Hopefully. Little did Brooklyn know, but she would then take her talents. Like I feel like LeBron James right now. <laughs> Taking my talents to <laughs> South Beach. So she took her talents from the soccer field to building something absolutely incredible with your body. Mm -hmm. Something strength-filled. Something that, that actually did take a lot of courage. Yes. And... Now you're thriving and now you're, you're overcoming so much and helping so many ladies, hundreds of thousands of around, around the world. So tell me about that. Tell me about that transition. We already talked about it on the Create You Experience here on YouTube. Remember, we have an experience before this and we were playing soccer. She beat me. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, you beat me. Damn. Yeah, she's pretty good. But tell me about that transition. Yeah, so I had my third knee reconstruction. I was a junior in high school at the end of uh, my high school career. I went overseas to play soccer on a U.S. women's team. Awesome experience, and it was kind of the, the peak of my career. I was getting ready to commit to a school for college that I always hoped to go for, and, uh, you know, we played all, all week uh, long in a tournament, and the last second of my last game, I tore everything. It was literally a split second. That split boom. second, yep, boom. Literally on the ground, whole knee blown up, tore every single thing, <sighs> came back. I had, a, I actually had to fly back to the United States the next day from Switzerland. It was the worst pain I think I've ever been in. And I got home 
And when I was born, I had heart surgery, so I can't get MRIs. So I had to kind of oh, like, wow. yeah, so I have to just kind of sit. I had to sit on that knee surgery and before that for three weeks. And, uh, you know, I got surgery. It took, it was supposed to take an hour. It took five hours for the knee surgery. So it really, it really caught you off guard. And oh yeah, I can actually relate to that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if many people know or not that are listening or watching that, um, I had a concussion my second to last game in high school for mm -hmm. football. And I had an opportunity to most likely go to Vanderbilt. I was in talks about to sign with them. Super excited to, to do it. It's SEC team, massive division one school. Mm -hmm. You're familiar with Vanderbilt. Yeah, of course. And I suffered a concussion, a severe concussion. And over that next year um, was one of the most brutal years of my life. I had brain fog every single day, post-concussive syndrome. Mm -hmm. So I know what it's like. I know what it's like to have everything that you've worked for your entire life and lose it in a second. But here's the most beautiful thing about that is that made you who you are today. Yes. And you wouldn't have hundreds of thousands of people following you and you wouldn't be able to inspire so many women and men mm -hmm. all around the world if it weren't for that. Uh, yeah, a hundred percent. I, I, I don't think, I, I mean, at the time I never would have ever thought about being a fitness influencer and doing what I do now. And if it wasn't for that one moment going overseas and having the best experience of my life. And at the time thinking, oh my God, I lost everything in that split second. That one split second changed my entire life. It was a blessing it in was. disguise. Yeah. Because, and we were talking about this before, I know her story pretty well now. You, you really were, were fatigued with your life. Like mm -hmm. in general, like you, you felt weak, you felt alone, you felt insecure, mm -hmm. like all these different things when you saw that your leg was atrophied to half the size of the other one. Mm -hmm. So tell us about that because you went from that point to bodybuilding. But what was that bridge? Where, where did that, that bridge form? Like when was it? Yeah, so after surgery, I, I obviously had the surgery and that's a full knee reconstruction, metal in my knee, but I also had total muscle atrophy in my right leg. So with that, uh, I was in that leg brace where, on the picture for two to three months. Couldn't walk, couldn't do anything. So for me, I felt before, you know, that injury, I felt so strong and at my, my highest point. And then all of a sudden I felt so, so weak right. and alone, as you said. Um, and I felt sorry for myself and I was sitting in my bed saying, you know, why me? Why is this happening to me again? And from there, I, I, I decided, I was like, what's me sitting in bed thinking about this? If I could change that one split second, what is that going to do? For my outcome now yeah how's it gonna serve you yeah how, so i you know this is me 17 year old me crutched down to my home gym and i just started lifting weights upper body for a couple hours i had nothing else to do and i felt i started feeling strong again i felt started feeling good about myself again and from there i spent all summer in my basement every single day <laughs> yeah, yeah. lifting with my big leg brace on and <laughs> i started seeing progress and it was um, the best feeling ever to see, you know, those physical changes from putting in the work and just kind of feeling strong again, going for PRs on a shoulder press or something. And from there I was hooked. And that's kind of how I got into bodybuilding from, you know, that knee we gotta, Yeah, we, we got to see some of these transformations really quick. Yeah, th these are absolutely amazing. I'm going to pull up a couple of these on, on the screen here on YouTube. So this is before and this is after. Look at that. That's inc it, they're incredible transformations. I mean, you can see the delts. You can see the back. Look mm -hmm. at that back. Yeah, that left fit photo was like, I think, I don't know. I, I, you, it cuts off, but I had the big leg brace on. And that, wow. that was my skinniest point on the left. And, and you feel so strong. And, and you know what's interesting about this is that when you talk about bodybuilding and, build, and, and like really building size and strength mm -hmm. and everything, Usually females are like, whoa, I want nothing to do with that. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get big and bulky. But you're, you're like proving that, hey, no, you can work out mm -hmm. the way you want. You can work out in the gym, lift heavy weights sometimes, even not lift heavy weights, but do bodybuilding exercises, movements, and look good. Sculpt your body the way you want, right? Yeah, and I was a victim of it too. I thought, you know, bodybuilding when I was in high school – Ew, that's bulky. And even when I was, you know, that happened, I started getting into bodybuilding before my senior year. And I had a lot of girls talk behind my back saying, oh my God, she's going to look like a man. What is she doing? But you couldn't blah, hear blah, them because your back was so big. Is that what it, 
Is that a funny <laughs> joke? I think that was a funny joke. I thought it was good. Yeah, cool. I'm always here Sweet. for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I know I thought that too. And I think in, for females in general and lifting, that's a big misconception is with bodybuilding. You hear the word bodybuilding and instantly you think of something totally different than what it is. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, and big, you know, juiced up girls. So, yeah. which is not what. I like green juice though. I do not. You know, well, you gave me that green juice. I, oh, shit. I was trying to be healthy, but it I didn't work out. I was trying to like, yeah, wow. I was trying to make a statement. I, I was trying to be health, but. It, okay, it's cool. I, I don't it's, know. It's whatever. I don't know about well, that. Well, <laughs> now that I know that she does not like green juice, I will definitely not offer you another green juice again. I yeah, probably may, will. May, maybe maybe we can just get like Monster or something. Oh, Monster is <laughs> caffeine. We can get into that a little bit later. But, you know, that, what you have been talking about is so important. Not to give into peer pressure, not to give into what everyone else is saying, not to yes. give into the bullshit, the noise. Yes. And a lot of people talk about this on social media all the time, but who truly listens to, mm -hmm. to themselves saying that? Like, oh, don't give in, don't give in. We all give in. Mm -hmm. What's one way that you gave in during the, during the journey? Because you did, you know you did in some way, shape or form in one instance. So when you were taking that, going through that transformation, where did you give in a little bit to the noise and what people were saying? So I... I got in to doing competitions and especially this last year, I got super competitive about it. And I think something had to do with it. At first it had nothing to do with social media. I didn't even have a social media account, uh, nothing. But then this last year I did a show and I, I felt that pressure. I feel like, you know, there's, there's that pressure on social media of I, I want to win. I, I was so determined to get a pro card. And I drove my body into the ground mm. for it. Uh, and I look back now, and it wasn't even that long ago. It was a couple, you know, I, I think I finished in August, what, nine months ago. And I look back, I'm like, why did I do that? I wasn't even enjoying myself. Why I, did you do it? I did Be it honest. because, yeah, because I, I felt pressure from social media to continue and to win. And I wanted to win so bad. Uh, why did you want to win so bad? The status of it. That's and the, what would it the, give you? Nothing. And that's what I realized no, now. No, 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 no. At that point, what at did the, you feel like it would give you? It would just give me the feeling of accomplishing a said task that I said I was going to do. But at the end of the day, when I, you know, I look back on it, I'm like, but if I get, I get this title, IFBB Pro, what is it going to do for me? Right. What is, it doesn't make you any more talented. Yeah. It doesn't make you any better than anyone else. It doesn't mm -hmm. make you a professional or an expert, I right? Know. Yeah. But I do want to touch on this because this is something that we really want to dive into because mm -hmm. a lot of people actually struggle from this. You know, it's that I want that IFBB pro card or I want this. I want to be seen as actually accomplishing this. Mm -hmm. Where else in your life did you feel like you felt fell short and you really didn't achieve what you set out to achieve fully? In bodybuilding specifically? No, anything in your life. Anything. Um, I guess it happens a lot. It happened a lot through my life. Uh, playing soccer, especially. I and, and playing with the same girls. I have felt I've fallen short of making certain teams that I was so determined to make, and it's it's hard. It's hard to work so hard and see someone else get it and then you go after it and and not get it but at the end of the day you look back and just kind of with the soccer thing and the knee surgery something happens to you and it's not what you want it want but it's a blessing in disguise yeah it's happened a lot at all times life. at yeah. all times too yes and i think that's that's something to really target on right there is everything does happen for a reason yes i i 100 percent believe in that yes and and we don't know what's why mm -hmm. we don't we can't explain it mm -hmm. but little do we know little do we know on the other side where all the like we're it's like we're it's like we're in a big forest mm -hmm. and we're like going through going through and all of a sudden you see some light and you open you, you get outside of the forest and it's like everything you could ever imagine it's like maybe the car maybe it's the relationship maybe it's the ifbb pro card for all yeah. you know right because you can work and work and work and fail and fail and fail and fail and fail. Mm -hmm. And then you can either quit because you feel like you're not, it's not coming to you. Or you could have a shift and realize that maybe that's not the journey for you. And actually the success is right around the corner. You just don't see it yet. Yeah. And you just got to keep on going with it in a different way. Maybe in, in a more humble way. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's giving back a little bit more. Or yeah. maybe it's sitting and, and taking a different approach to your life. So... Um, yeah, I love, I love how you, how you touched on that. So 
you know, we all go, we all go through things and we all, mm -hmm. all need to counteract yeah. in some way, shape or form. Your turning point was going to bodybuild. Yes. Bodybuilding. So, and so what does that give to you today? What is that feeling when you walk into a gym? Mm -hmm. Everyone talks about this, but what is it with you that makes you want to progress more and more because you are so well known for your workouts mm -hmm. on social media because you can build like a really nice body, upper body, especially. Yep. And so what does that give you? See, now my journey, this last year, it was so focused on the aesthetic of getting on stage. But now I have this feeling of I go into the gym and my I just love feeling strong. Like I, my gym workouts have been amazing and just being able to share workouts and having other people, both male and female reach out to me and say, Oh my God, I tried your workout. It destroyed me in the best <laughs> way possible. And thank you so much for sharing this because to me, just helping someone, even if it's just one person a day makes me, my heart so happy yeah. because I, when I started my journey, and it's crazy now that I'm a bodybuilding.com athlete. I Googled, I was 14, I Googled bodybuilding for women. And there was not that much stuff yeah, there, that there wow. is now. And the amount of information and content you can find uh, and, and having someone say, you changed my life is the best feeling ever. It's beautiful. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. When, because it's funny because when you were looking online, you were looking for inspiration. Yes. You were looking for someone to be like, hey, mm -hmm. I did it. You can too. And so what did you show to the world? I did it and mm -hmm. you can too. And so what was missing in your life at that point, now you've provided to other women around the world and even guys. Yes. And, and that's the mm -hmm. cool thing because we, we never should limit ourselves because of our race, our gender, no. nope. our, our views on religion, our political reviews. Like we're, we're all the same. Yeah, 100%. And I hate when, you know, people tell me they're like can I do this workout I'm a guy I'm like well what's the difference between me going into the gym and you going into the gym we're both there we're both trying to work for a common goal I was like there's no difference I was like go in go in with the intensity there's no and in, in the industry there's so much with females and kind of targeting female workouts and workout supplements and stuff and I'm just like there's no difference there's none and I hate right. that stigma it bothers me and and you've worked with you know this <laughs> This actually brings up a huge, huge point. Mm -hmm. You have your degree, right? And so mm -hmm. that's in, what, what is it in? Health sciences. Health sciences. Yeah. And you've interned with? I've interned, well, right now I'm interning with uh, Sport and Spine Rehab, a right. Cairo PT office. Um, but I was a sports performance trainer for yeah. a while. Too. And so that right there is, is coming down to science. Like, mm -hmm. yo, WebMD. No, I'm kidding. PubMed. <laughs> that's PubMed status. That's PubMed status. <laughs> But the way you train, the way you train can be for anybody and everyone that just wants to build their body, that truly wants to build each muscle group. Like a woman saying, hey, I want, like, we're going to focus on shoulder or delts, chest, and maybe a little bit of back today. How is that going to be any different? Science is science, right? Exactly. And when yeah. you talk about strength, when you talk about power, when you talk about hypertrophy, when you talk about muscular endurance, when you talk about rest, uh, rest ranges and, and frequency and all this stuff, is it the same Brooklyn or is it different for women? It's exact same. Oh shit. <laughs> oh. Mic drop. <laughs> yeah, mic drop. I, I had no clue. I thought that it was like you go to school for exercise physiology for males. I I know. I, totally. It's crazy. Wow. Crazy. Interesting stuff. green juice for men only. Oh no, pre workout for women. Oh no, protein powder for uh, men uh, and women. Oh, I'm like, oh, what's the difference? Oh shit. Oh, it's yeah. a pink pink bottle. <laughs> it's a fucking pink bottle. <laughs> it bothers me so much. I'm just like, oh. Oh God. shoot. And it's always more expensive for women if you haven't noticed that. Yeah, today. because women yeah. buy. Yeah. Women are buyers. Yeah. So hey, buy my product today. Five ninety nine. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, but so, so that, that that's one part of your story and and that's yeah. all incredible and now you're here now you're a bodybuilder mm -hmm. but outside of bodybuilding because everyone needs a life yes everybody actually yeah. doesn't need a life they have a life yeah. we're all thankful we yeah. get to have a life what are some things that you do that nobody really knows about or are you or are you really just focused on training and are you focused on Makeup, because you're also big into makeup. And, and I do like that, yeah. So, so what else do you do? Come on, tell me. Get, let's yeah. get juicy. Let's 
so fucking juicy. I wish my life was really juicy right now, but to be honest, it is so hectic with school and interning. Right. So my day is currently waking up, going to the gym, going straight to school, going straight to my internship, coming home and doing all my research. So you're structured. I'm very structured. And you yeah. research. I, all my studies right now are research. And you put time and effort into crafting your skill. Yes, I'm actually um, doing a presentation at my university at the end of this month. So I'm really excited. I got it submitted for that. But yeah, I do a lot of research. That's a fucking lot. badass. Thank you. That's badass because a lot of people feel like they have it all already and they don't need to research anymore or, no, no, hey, I've already learned. So eh, my experience is strong enough. But the truth is you always have room to grow. Oh, and yeah. and just like just like you're coaching people mm -hmm. and you have everything that's launching in the business and everything like that. You also have a coach. Of course, yeah. And, I have a and, coach. and that's Nick, who's also on, on the Create mm -hmm. You Experience and everything. And it's so important because Nick probably works with other, other coaches and stuff, right? So, like, yeah. everyone, don't think that you ever have enough. No. Like, never you never settle. have enough. You never, yeah. oh, never settle. why? Because there's always room, as you said, there's always room to grow, to learn, to be more. And I, I, something my mom said to me, you're not, you should never be the smartest person in the room. Why not? You always surround yourself with people who bring you value in your life mm. in a different way. Bring you value. And that is also shown through the people that follow you. Mm -hmm. And that's also shown through your little brother, your little sister, your cousin, that person at the grocery store. Everyone brings you value mm -hmm. in every room. You just don't know it yet. And that's the most important thing is to get up and find out for yourself. Yep. And that's what you've done with bodybuilding and taking it to the next step. Okay, so I wanna ask you another question. And this is a question I like to ask every person that comes on. Perfect. Sometimes. Okay. Sometimes. Sometimes. So when we talk about a dinner table, okay? A nice old <laughs> dinner table, you know, like this create you table, but you know, not as triangle and beautiful, hey, create you. <laughs> Go to the description right now. Seven, seven, <laughs> seven free products. Go. Swipe up. Swipe up now. <laughs> I wish we had a swipe up feature. Um, but we're at a dinner table. Okay. I'm not there, by the way. You can have me there if you would like. Oh, I'll, I'll keep you It's there. food for everyone. Okay. Um, and you have three people mm -hmm. that you can have dinner with. Oh, They're shoot. all at the same table. Who would they be? I'll give you three for myself today. Okay. okay? Give me three. I would really like to tap into the mind of Gary Vee. Ooh. Because I feel like mm -hmm. him and I, him and I have a very interesting perspective on life and people around us. I love him. And we're also both very high energy. Gary, I think I got you on that a little bit, but it's cool. Um, no, I, lo I love Gary. And then I would also love Tony Robbins. Mm -hmm. And actually, you know what? I want four people. Tony Robbins. I really want Tony Robbins. And then I also would love Donald Trump. Oh, God. Because Donald That's Trump, I want to tap into his mind and really, really understand who he is, what he truly enjoys, and what he's truly impassionate about. Because I think all of this stuff is a facade of yes. who he truly is. And I actually think he's a good dude. I really do. I think everybody's a good dude or a good girl. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Protein. No. <laughs> but I would also like Donald Trump. And then finally, I would like Logan Paul. Ooh, because yeah. not because of his fault. I don't listen. I don't give a fuck. About, look, I don't give a fuck about followers. I don't. It's just not something that I really truly care about. Mm -hmm. But the controversy around him and yeah. and his high energy and his athlete, athleticism and how much confidence he has in himself, but also the other side. I know he's got a soft side. I know he has a lot of things that that hold him back in his life. I like tapping into that shit. I think it's juicy. I use that word juicy a lot. Also moist. Ooh. Like, hey, hey, ma'am, can I have a moist towelette while you're at a restaurant? It's like, feel a it's like very interesting. Yeah. 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 yeah so like juicy. Juicy. So I you. Oh, my God. Three people, go. Uh, can I not take any of yours? Gary go ahead. V's no, good. take whoever. You want Gary Vee? Well, Gary Vee and Donald Trump are two that would be very interesting. So them two. Give, a, give me someone that you. Ooh, I would really like, and this is a little bit girly for me, but I would love, and you might not even know who he is, James Charles, the makeup James artist. James Charles. I, is he on him? Instagram? Like he's, he's oh, got a he's big following. Huge on Instagram and YouTube. I would love. He's got like all makeup all over. He is. Oh my God, he is so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so him. Who else? I, 
honestly, <laughs> this might sound a little, I would love to sit down and have dinner. Oh man, I'm trying to pick which one I want to do. You can't pick me, so. Oh, it's fine. Yeah, you definitely, yeah. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know you want to, but it's cool. Well, you can be there. Okay, thank you. So we have five people I'll be now. the butler. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, I'll be the guy that grabs all the forks and like throws them in a bucket and just walks out. Whistling. I would love to, and, and again, here's another kind of makeup thing, but um, you know the Kardashian. Ooh, which one? Which one? Chloe? No. Ooh, yeah, me neither. Kylie for sure. Kylie. Well, Jenner. She would be Kylie Jenner. So Kylie Jenner. Yeah, she. She's she's awesome. Okay. I don't okay. Know. So I really want to tap into this because you said a couple of different people. Yeah. Why? So okay. So Donald Trump and Gary V. Very similar to what you said. I just find Gary V. I listen to every morning driving to school for my hour commute. I love his podcast. I love everything he preaches. We're better. No, I'm kidding. We're, we're all the same. We're all the same. <laughs> well, now I can start listening to Create You podcast. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, create Your Experience. Donald Trump, exactly, I, honestly, what you said. I would love to just sit down and dig into every, I think he's just a very Interest good, interesting and good businessman. Oh, and, he's a businessman. Yeah. Man. But I would love to just, I don't know, so many questions. So many so questions. Many. So many. There's so much. <laughs> I don't know where I would start, but he is fascinating. Fascinating. Okay, me. and then and then the uh, the makeup guy? Yeah, James Charles. I mean, he, I think he just turned 20. And this guy has 14, James. yeah, 14 James million. James Charles, 20 years old, makeup artist. 14 million on YouTube. 14 million. That's not bad. I, I, I mean, that's decent. I mean, he just started. Yeah, it's decent. It's whatever. And just <laughs> just his. <laughs> that's decent. That's that's cool. Forty million on Instagram too. I, he's just incredible. He's so talented with everything he does. Not makeup, um, uh, piano. He sings. He does everything, and a great businessman as well. And just the stigma between a male and the makeup industry is something I would love to just learn a little bit more about and just things he struggled with and how he's overcome things just he's so young him and then uh kylie jenner again kind of the same thing just being young i know she was more born into a family who was well known but from that she and i don't like to you know she was born into that family but she took that that power she had and made it into something incredible so I would love to sit down and talk to her as well. That's very interesting. You you can really, and I say this every episode whenever I, I ask that question, uh, you can really find out who a person is from that. Mm -hmm. from, from, hey, who would you like at your dinner table? Because, you know, if I said, hey, I would love the guy, the local guy from uh, McDonald's, I would like, uh, <laughs> I would like the, uh, the, uh, the maid uh, on, at my dinner table. Um, I would also like uh, Spec, Mike, the, uh, the guy with the video camera. Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful job. Um, that also explains a lot about a person. Yeah, it really does. Um, and it's interesting because each person has a story that we don't truly know about. So the Jenner family, mm -hmm. that that could be. We we really have no clue. We really oh, have no clue. Yeah. And so our judgment is is just not serving anything. It, it doesn't serve what we're creating or what we're developing or anything like that, right? So mm -hmm. so I think. When we're, when we're looking at people that are sitting at our table and the foods that we're going to provide to them and what we're going to be talking about, we can really start learning more about ourselves and, and watch those people and keep on being inspired. But ask yourself, why am I watching these people? Why do I want Tony Robbins? Why do I want Donald Trump? Why do I want Logan Paul? And sit with that and embrace it. So let me ask you, if you're here on video or, or on audio, who... Would you want at your dinner table? And if you have a little kitty dinner table, that's okay. I wouldn't fit in a little kitty chair. But you can. I don't know where I'm going with that. I don't even, I, I don't even know why I brought that up. It was just, I felt like a good, a good move. Okay. I liked it. Okay. So I, I actually want to I wanna, I wanna have a little bit of fun. Okay. On here. Um, and not talk about politics. <laughs> yes. Or religion. <laughs> Ooh. Religion. <laughs> it's not. Interesting. Not. Where do you want to go in the world? Where Anywhere in the go? world. Oh, man. I have so many places. If I had to pick one place I would want to go mm, that I haven't been to. Egypt? Mm. I would Egypt, go to Egypt. Egypt is definitely one. Tomorrow. Just You want to go? 
I'll go. Yeah, let's go. You down? I honestly would. Egypt, <laughs> that's a good one. Egypt, oh, I don't know where I'd want to go. Okay, well, we need to tap into why you don't know. Because that's so also explained. There's so many places But you can't have everything to. that you want. I know. Yep. That's, that's So let me ask you, Brooklyn, because a lot of the times when I ask you a question, you really have to think about it. You know where I'd want to go? I'm a history person. I love history. And that's why I would like Egypt. You're a thinker. Yes. You're an analyzer. I am. I'm 100% that. I would love to go to Europe and go to some of the, like, uh, Amsterdam and why because of the uh, concentration camp uh, I would love oh, okay I was literally thinking of something completely different I, w- I love World War I <laughs> I'm love glad the world you brought war. that up no I love that type of history it fascinates me so much and you know I live in DC so we have the Holocaust Museum and yeah. you I, I love going to museums in general but that museum speaks to me and learning it in school so many times I would love to go and look at that kind of history and going through that because the whole scenario of how everything went down. Mind blowing, right? Yeah. It, it blows my mind. It honestly does. So I would love to go and I love Europe in general, but I would love to go specifically to Amsterdam. Uh, Poland. Poland. Yes. And uh, the Anne Frank house would be one place. Ooh, I really want Anne to go Frank. To. I read that book. Yes. I, so did I. Yeah. <laughs> so I read a book. I'm a reader. Perfect. I, I'm a professional reader. <laughs> I'm a speed reader. But but yeah, I'm actually, uh, did you know that I'm Polish? I am too. Really? Yeah, 15%. Yeah. How the heck do you know the exact percentage? Because I got my DNA test. I, me too. 23 and me. Hey, yeah, this is a sponsorship same. ad. Oh my gosh, uh, this is an ad. Uh, this is an ad. Uh, uh, 23 uh, and me. Yeah. Pay I'm me. Too, um, <laughs> no, what did you use? 23 and me. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So yeah, it's interesting that that, that, that name, 23 and me. But did you know that I'm asked what? Ask a, ask a Wajin Jew. I'm gonna I, ask a. I think I have I have like point one. Really, I'm twenty eight percent. Oh dang. Yeah, no, I'm I'm in there. One. No, I'm in there. Like I'm definitely a part of the the team. Dang. Yeah. Oh. So I'm yeah, and and I literally thought I was like so much Puerto Rican and like Italian. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually like I'm Puerto Rican Italian. That's what I tell. People. I'm like yo Puerto Rican Italian, but really I'm I'm like hey my name is Brendan. I'm ask a, ask a Wajin. <laughs> Ask a Wajin Jew ish ish kind of thing because I'm not even sure. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm about 8% Puerto Rican and, and uh, 15% Italian. Nice to meet you, man. You thought you were all Puerto Rican and Italian? Yeah, no, I just told myself that for oh, the longest wow. time. I'm also Czechoslovakian. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah 23 me was cool. Are you Italian? No, I'm not Italian, but I am mm. uh, Spanish, Portuguese. Mm, that's kind of Spanish and Portuguese. Yeah. Do you speak? Oh no! Ooh, no! I don't. No, I'm. I'm not. No, hablo español. I didn't even know I was, but my grandma found out she was, which was a whole other thing. And she uh, found out that she spoke Spanish. No, no, no! Not that she spoke Spanish. Whoa, whoa! People are speaking Spanish. I understand all of you. What the is going on here? That she was. That she was um, from Spain, or she has heritage from Spain. So I found out I was too. Okay, so Brooklyn, I'm so glad we talked about 23 and Me. I'm so talking. I I love it. I'm happy. But like, <laughs> I I really want to dig into you. I, no, whoa, hmm. that yeah, that sounded a little off. off. Uh, yeah. Ah. Yeah. All right. Uh, we gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Um. No, but I really want to dig in. I want to dig into something something even more juicy. Okay. I want to I want to tap into that personality of yours. Okay. And why you're so fucking calm all the time. Like I'm over here like this. I'm like, yo guys, <laughs> popping. I'm hyped. Let's go. If you didn't see me, I'm like having a seizure on YouTube. Um, but like, geez, I'm sweating after that too. In the altitude. Put, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Definitely burning a lot of calories out here. Um, PubMed. No, no uh, new low way in tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I had this thing with, with Nick and I was saying how, uh, how when you go up into the mountains, yeah, you actually burn more calories because you have less oxygen. <laughs> Is that a thing or did you just. No, <laughs> no, I made that shit up. I made it up. I make up a lot of stuff. It's funny. But yeah. So like, how do you stay so calm? Like, why? 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 Why not flip a shit and be like, yo, motherfucker, back up because I'm about to go wild on you. Like, why? why? Well, let's, let me ask you, why are you so hyper? Oh, wow. That's a good question. I thought this was my podcast, but it's cool. Well, I'll answer it. Um, <laughs> I mean, why not? Yeah. So why am I so hyper? Yeah. Do you think it's hyper or do you think it's like energy, like high energy? Hmm. 
Do you? I mean, kind of the what's, same. What's your perspective on me? Like, I, oh, okay. Should I? Should I, like with the energy thing? Like, what's your? No, perspective? No, I, I love it. I love it. I think it's. I, I like the high energy. But you are you, you are high, like hyper high energy. I feel like they're hyper. Kind of, okay. Yeah, they're kind of the same. I feel like that's a you know that's a that's like something a doctor would say like you're hyper active, and yeah. we need to get that taken care of with some medicine. <laughs> sir um but no i'm so passionate i'm passionate about everything that i do everything that i touch everything that i uh eat i love food passionate about it Woo! all in i can't wait um, for a pokey bowl yeah po- pokey no, poke po- poke bowl. oh, oh shit. god here we go oh, again <laughs> okay so we've had this conversation about the poke bowl the <laughs> pokey or the poke it's okay poke. so we have someone from hawaii talking to me and 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 brooklyn saying it's poke bowl but I'm like, you sound fucking weird saying it like that. And I don't appreciate that. I feel so offended as a poke bowl lover. It's not poke bowl. There's an E at the end. Yeah, I've, poke. Yeah. When you poke someone, how does it spell? Oh, but, wow. But this isn't, is a good there, one. isn't there like a... Hold on, hold on. When you spell poke, hey, I just poked you on Facebook. By the way, people do that all the time. But there's also words like that where they're like... <laughs> Brooklyn. Read, read Brooklyn, and red. Brooklyn, read and red are spelled the same. No, let's get yeah. back. Let's get back to the poke. How do you spell poke? P-O-K-E. Wow. Interesting, guys. So we're going to close on that <laughs> fact. <laughs> P-O-K-E. P-O-K-E. Boom. Uh, no, but I don't even know where we were because I, I kind of like we're, we're going on tangents. Oh, but why I are you really, hyper? Yeah. Um, why so, so why are you so calm? Well, I mean, I wouldn't say, you know, I'm very passionate about what I do too, but I just, I don't know. Do you want everybody to win around you? Yeah. I'm always, I'm a team player. I'm a team player. I'm definitely, I, I love cheering people on. I was Ooh. also a cheerleader in high school. I was a you, cheer captain, varsity cheer, cheer captain. A cheer lifer. I'm yeah. a cheer lifer. Hello, I my name is Brennan Myers and welcome to the Create You Experience. I'm a cheer lifer <laughs> and thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Why did you like cheerleading? I, I like the energy of it Ooh. and yeah. Similar to me, the energy that yeah, I have. Yeah, I, li- I liked it. I love the, envi- oh, I love the environment of football, by the way, too. I'm a football player? It. Yeah, I love it. Wow. Uh, so, but I was a competitive cheerleader, so we did, you know, all, all that and then some. So the tumbling, the stunting, all that kind of stuff. But it was fun. It was different than soccer. It's more of like an, I guess when you're doing competitive cheerleading, more of like an adrenaline rush kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, I liked it. So, okay, so you like sports. You're into sports. You, yeah. you have all this story. You you spell uh, the the poke, you say pokey bowl, yeah. but uh, yeah. you won't get into that. It's a little off. Um, you know, you you uh, built an incredible body, strong body. Um, you're very smart. You're very calm. What's your favorite movie? Ooh. Oh, shit. Right now, oh. right now, it's, um, what's that movie <laughs> called? Uh, a Star is Born right now. Is what is it? A Star is Born. A is Star. A Star is Born. A Star is Born. A star. Shallow. Shallow. You don't know the song Shallow by Lady Gaga, Bradley Cooper? Can you sing it for me? No. Yeah, no, please. Seriously. I can't. Come on. Give me give me a little sugar. I can't. Come, please, Brooklyn. This is <laughs> important for the Create You experience. It, we, we We're need getting to, uncomfortable. If you <laughs> sing, I'll sing. We have to do a duet. Okay. Okay. Ready? <laughs> Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Come on. Are you serious? You're not even going to, are you not going to give me no, no. I don't know where we're at right, in You want song. me to sing? Do you want me to sing for you? <clears throat> yeah. I love you, you love me. <laughs> We're a happy family. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't know the fucking rest. Of the <laughs> Shit. Okay, okay. So you are you into movies? Are you into music? Oh, I'm really into music. Do you like to twerk? Uh, I'm not really a twerker. I am. I am. Okay, yeah. I would love to learn. It's whatever. Yeah, I tried to watch yeah. a YouTube video one time of how to do it, but it's. See, I'm. <laughs> I, I literally did. I am a YouTube video, so yeah. you could definitely. I mean, we, um, could, we could maybe do last after show. Yeah. We'll uh, get into the twerking <laughs> footage. I'm not really a twerker. But I love all kinds of music, though. I grew up on music. Do you like country music? Let me I, ask I you do. something. I do. This is actually a. This is. I. By the way, anyone that's listening or watching, uh, I flirt a lot. I'm mm-hmm. a like I'm a very flirtatious person. I I build off of energy. I love everyone around me. You know I do this, yeah. but we're also very close friends. Um, what do you think about a man who plays a guitar, acoustic guitar? Oh, oh, oh wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah. What is it? What is it? Like, I really need to understand. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's a man playing a, a guitar. Yeah. Singing. Yeah. Oh. All of the above. Mike, Whew. Mike, Whew. Speck. 
Behind oh. the camera, man. Yo, we really need to get into like more acoustic <laughs> stuff. Cool. No, this isn't for me, by the way. This is asking for a friend. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, oh, man. Or piano, too. A piano. piano. Ooh. Oh. Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. When you go on a, on a date with a man, mm-hmm. um, I love how we're just shifting the fuck out of this. Do you like when I just, I, I blurt it out and I'm like, I f- love you. Like, is that cool? You, yeah, I love it. Cool, sweet. Um, okay. So if you're going to go on a date, mm-hmm. what is the best first date, the most respectable, respectable, respectful mm-hmm. first date for that yeah. a man could give you? Yeah, so don't really go on many dates. Okay. So we'll did, put that out there. Okay. Have uh, really many. Email is in the description if applications yeah, yeah. um i'm yeah yeah okay, okay. cool okay. sweet that's out of the check all right yeah. next perfect um <laughs> so an ideal first date Ooh. i don't really know if i would say going out to dinner which would be like a standard first date i like to like go do something like maybe like go out somewhere like roll down a hill yeah like with maybe, a bag over your head mm, i don't know about rolling it because then my hair would get messed up mm. so i don't know about that but like maybe okay. going and doing something like just going out it, it could be anything really like hiking or it doesn't have to be fitness i mean not do you like fitness. a competitive man oh yeah yeah i do because i'm very competitive too right so so this is my other question do women and this is for all the men out there and also the women to chime in and be like yo that's wrong yeah. or yeah, yeah yeah i agree uh for for all these men out there these boys because mm-hmm. there's still a lot of boys watching this actually mm-hmm. boys men whatever age doesn't matter it does actually court of law um but what would you say that you could be in a relationship or date someone that is completely opposite to you? Opposite in what way? So like, energy or um, your like passion wise, like what what, what no. their goal is? Yeah, no, 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 yeah, no. Is that the way? Is that the same thing for every woman? Because as 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 a male myself that dates and other guys that are all around the world that are looking. For someone to come into their life, they're 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 almost they're searching, right? Mm-hmm. And th- like, where do you build that confidence with a woman if they're a little bit different, or like, should they not even pursue? Should we not even pursue that relationship or that possibility? Or like, what's your perspective on it? Because if someone's opposite of you, are you gonna tell the guy, or do we just need to find it out for ourselves and really like you? Is that like you, you understand I, what I'm asking? Yeah. So I mean, I guess. It's, it doesn't hurt to find out, but at the same time, you don't want to also waste your time with someone. If you don't feel, I feel like you, it, it's kind of like a feeler thing. Like if you go on a date with someone and. But what like, if we don't trust our gut? What if we don't trust our gut? And well, see, that's the problem. So Th- that's so, how people waste time in relationships. They stay with someone and they settle with someone because they give them, you know, that instant gratification and they don't feel alone and they get stuck in a relationship ooh. and you know, they settle. This is it, gold. Yeah, they settle. This is like if you were digging for gold, yeah, you found it. Yeah. Hey. Pretty much. And it's a golden <laughs> <Jackpot>. nugget. <laughs> oh my gosh, leprechaun. <laughs> so, okay. So how do we tell? Do we need to ask the questions? Do we need to set an intention? W- what do we do? Like if we're, we're at dinner and, mm-hmm. and we're kind of like into, into the other girl, like do we a- ask something? When's too early? Like what's the... I don't think asking for a friend. <laughs> I don't think it's too I, I think it's who you are as a person. Like if you're comfortable with asking certain questions and kind of seeing how the relation, you know, how the, the conversation's going. If the person seems very standoffish and very closed off, I, I don't know, it's hard to say. Okay. Well, let me ask you this because I'm a very straightforward man. Yeah, I know. And I'm like I'm like if I'm at dinner with someone, maybe it's not the first dinner. You don't want to set up, set yourself up to lose, right? So uh, one thing that I do is I set the intention mm-hmm. and I say, look, uh, I'm really attracted to you. Tell me if this is a good, good way of thinking. Of it. Okay. I'm really attracted to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love hanging out with you. Mm-hmm. I really would love to see where this goes. It's more than a friendship. I know. I think that's great. I think. Oh, thank yeah. the Lord. Woo. <laughs> Woo. I thought I was, I was afraid for a second because. If that was a failing a failing strategy, yeah. I would have to you know rewrite the script uh, like a twenty year script. So I'm glad you're. Oh, you're in the clear. You're in the okay, clear. Okay, cool. So no, I think being upfront with someone and not just kind of leading them on is yeah. good, ideal, in general. I think I I would appreciate that in general, and I would say the same thing to someone else. You know, if I wasn't interested, I would 
say I'm getting Okay, so a girl that won't say that. Yeah. We just need to ask the question or set the intention. Yeah, right? you need to you need to ask. I mean are you what? interested in me? Yeah. And not over text message. Either. No, not over text oh, message. Oh, thank the Lord. <laughs> Look, I'm the type of guy. I think, did I FaceTime you the first time I ever talked to you? I almost yeah. feel like I did. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a FaceTimer. Like, yeah. I'm like, yo, let me just, hey, what's your number? Okay, FaceTime. Boom. Well, because text can be interpreted so many different ways. Yeah. Like, you don't, you don't know what the person, how the person's tone is or anything. So it's, it's confusing. I love how we're talking about relationships now. What's relationship 101 now, the podcast? Ooh, that's so fucking true. Yeah. Don't you think everything in life is about relationships? It is, yeah. Everything. Friendships, uh, you know, how you get along with people. I mean, who you surround yourself with kind of is a relationship. Your words, your world type mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. I actually talk about that all the time. Like just your words, your world. Mm -hmm. What you say, what you give, how your energy is, everything is, is your world, like what you surround yourself with. Uh, what, what would you say? To someone that is is seeking something in their life so greatly they don't really know what it is they're trying to find it it's like almost like a passion that they're just looking and looking and looking and seeking they're like where the fuck is the pat like where is it where is it where is it what would you say to someone that's kind of feeling stagnant lost weak just like you were when you had that horrific injury and surgery and and, and uh situation in your life are we still then. talking about relationships? No, we're no, we're like shifting. <laughs> okay, we're I was shifting. Like, what? <laughs> we're shifting because this is a relationship. This all has to deal with a relationship. But yeah. like, what would you tell someone? Because this could be searching for a woman. This yeah. could be searching for a job. This could be searching for my passion. Mm -hmm. It could be everything from A to Z, right? Can you even be in a relationship with a woman or a male until you know about yourself or have a passion for yourself, right? Can you? I mean, personally, I would say. No, not a successful relationship. I feel like you, I, I feel like with relationships and, and something I, I take is I want to find myself and be established and know what I want before I bring someone else into that, into my world with that. And I want the same thing for my, you know, the male I bring into my world. I want him to know who he is and what he wants in life. So when we come together, we both have our own individual goals that feed off of each other. And it's not just, oh, he, and again, going back to relationships, I couldn't be with someone that didn't have a drive and didn't mm -hmm. have that because I'm so driven with everything I do. I want this and that, and I know clearly what I want. So right. my thing is you need to find out who you are before you almost feed off of someone else to make you feel whole. So create you before you can create that relationship that you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Damn, that's some that's some marketing right there tactics that I just pulled out of a hat. That little I love it. Oh my gosh, no, <laughs> but it's it, I'm kidding, but like it's so true, mm -hmm. and that's why I'm asking you about that. That if someone's stagnant or lost yeah. or weak or whatever, what what's something that you can tell them that that will get them over the hump? Honestly, put yourself out there. Try new things. Like, what's it gonna? You have one life. Why do the same thing over and over again if it's not working? If it's right. not working, try something else. You might surprise yourself and love it and find that passion from it. I mean, for me, again, it was soccer. It was always soccer. And all of a sudden, I'm into fitness and yeah. I, I'm into beauty and stuff. And I just kind of like to try new things. Try new things and see what's out there. Explore the world. Uh, and, and don't you know settle for if you're not feeling fulfilled by what you're doing in life, don't settle for it. Amen. And so if you're listening or watching right now, remember we're here on YouTube and you're using the wrong soap, I suggest you try a new soap. Yeah. 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 Like that's, that's a good way to close, isn't it? I love it. If you have the wrong shampoo, yeah. choose a different one. Get a new shampoo. Get a new shampoo. Mm -hmm. If your chicken's too grilled, try something new. Air fry it. Don't grill it as much. <laughs> <laughs> Air fry it. Why not? I always like to like spin things into like jokes a little bit. I think it's kind of fucking funny. Oh, funny. Sorry, I didn't mean to curse. Unfiltered. I'm just fucking kidding. Um, so I think I think that's a good a good point to kind of close on. Okay, I love it. And bring a, a cool summary up of what we just talked about. Basically, yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> I have a lot of phlegm in this high altitude of Denver, Colorado. Same. Yeah. Same. Uh, so in summary. You played soccer. 
really went through a tough situation with your leg, mm -hmm. um, you somewhere along the line started to call poke pokey. All right. And <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but I'm right. That, I know. Yeah, I'm right. it's cool. Um, yeah. Comment section, please. Um, <laughs> but, but you went through a lot, you went through a, a lot. It's, it, that's the truth. And you found strength in bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. You found strength in something that you really were desperate for at, at, at that time, mm -hmm. but you found it because you just trusted that it would happen. Yep. You trusted the process. You trusted that you would create you eventually. I, lo I, lo I love the little create you references. Yeah. And not only that, but you took it and you turn it into a career. Mm -hmm. You said, I'm not going to just settle here. I'm not going to settle for like just getting strong and working out and stuff. Like, what do I want to do? I really enjoy this. So why not try it? Why not go all in? Mm -hmm. And so if you're watching right now, if you're listening right now, you know, without a doubt, you do know you may, you may have all this other stuff pulling you back, but you do know that it's possible that whatever you want in your life, whatever passion is there, there is something there and you know, it's there. So just keep chugging along and just try it. Try new things. Try that different shampoo. Try that different soap. Try <laughs> non-vegan mac and cheese. Isn't that, that's just mac and cheese, right? Is that, is that just yeah, mac and cheese? Mac, so mac and no, cheese. Like real shit, just fucking go out there and be who you want to be every single day. Create you with the intention that you're going to create you. And that's it. Don't allow the outside noise to bog you down. Allow the outside noise to give you feedback, but use it towards what you want to create, just like Brooklyn did. So Brooklyn, thank you so much for coming on here. Thank we you talked about me. relationships. Yes. We talked about <laughs> all, all of your research that you're doing in school and also your degree in health sciences and the possibilities that you have. So thank you so much for sharing and going in depth with yourself and showing everyone else what's possible with their selves. Because you were once that girl who was on the internet looking and searching for someone to inspire you. And now you are the woman on the internet that people are looking up and gaining inspiration from. So thank you so much for coming on here. And remember, everyone, I don't care if you're a guy or a girl, remember, this isn't just a man's podcast or a female's <laughs> podcast. Remember that. Remember that. Please remember Vegan that. protein. It's for everyone, I promise. <laughs> go into the description or the show notes. Go to the link. Get those seven free items. Review the podcast. If you enjoyed this, it's only on iTunes, by the way. Please just re leave a review. And if it's bad, great. If it's fucking bad and you don't like the fucking fuck, fuck, fuck <laughs> of the podcast, then it is what it is. You know, I'm here to bring visions to life and to sit down with incredible guests, people from, from Brooklyn all the way to homeless people mm -hmm. and people that work at regular, day, regular jobs and local businesses and CEOs and Fortune 500 companies. I want everyone and anyone to come on here, share their story and strategize with me. So again, thank you so much. Thank you everyone for listening for another episode of the Create You Experience. Remember, we're here on all audio platforms, duh. I said this about 150 times and YouTube with so many different angles. We got Mike behind spec. I like to call him spec behind the camera. He's incredible, incredible guy. I'm so thankful for you, man. Thank you for tuning in for another episode and I'll see you next time. Peace. Flight. I'm dedicated to growth. I keep my mind right. I fell down, got up. I'm unbreakable. Anything in my way, I'm a breakthrough. Lights, camera, action, take two. Can't worry about what they do. You got to create you.